Okay, let's start. Um, my name is Thorsten Rautus. I'm from DuckDuckGo. If your show name starts from A to L, then you might know me. <laughs> um, and I'm working at DuckDuckGo, and uh, this talk is about uh, mainly about DuckDuckHack, which is our way that you can extend the search engine, because our search engine is uh, partly open source, and we want to extend this and want to use the power of the community to make the engine better. <coughs> at first, what is DuckDuckGo exactly? DuckDuckGo is not really a search engine because we are really a meta search engine. Because we don't, we have our own index, but we are not trying to index the complete web. We are using other search engine indexes like Bing, Yandex, and several others, which we combine to get the results for the people. <coughs> that uh, reduces lots of work because uh, keeping up an index for all websites of the world is of course something which is unbelievably expensive. I have this nice example of Coiler in this case. Coiler, if someone of you knows it, is a company which was founded by some ex-Google employees who thought, hey, we were working at a, work, at a search engine, let's make a better one. And they got 10 millions of investment money and yeah, at the end they were broke and there was no index. So <laughs> um, this concept doesn't work. <coughs> And um, some big key points of uh, DuckDuckGo is we don't track you. This means we are privacy aware. That means uh, when you go to our site, the search you did is not transferred to anyone. Uh, normally, if you go to, to Google or someone else, the advertisers are getting what are you searching, you're getting UIPs, they know exactly who you are. On DuckDuckGo, we don't share those information. We don't even write the IP to log files or anything. The IP just doesn't exist in the system. So, <coughs> so you, are, you, you are, can be sure that there is no happiness advertisement after you search for your happiness problem. Um, then don't bubble. Um, in these uh, days today, Google is uh, like having 50 parameters which are used to determine what you really want to see. So they try to, to make the search results optimized for what they think you want to see. Uh, we don't do this. We don't think to know what you want. We just give you options to tune your, uh, your search. Like you can say, I want to search primary for another region or something like that. But in generally, you get the same result than anyone else on the same search. <coughs> um, yeah. Uh, then we have the bang uh, way, which is like you can make exclamation mark G at the end or the start or in the middle of your query. And your query goes transferred to Google then. So we make a redirect to Google or other, uh, any other search engine we have, uh, exclamation mark IMDB, exclamation mark A for Amazon, and so on. I think it's like 1,000 banks we have uh, right now. You can see them on the web. <coughs> but this is a method which makes it very attractive to be the default search engine, because from, from, from our text search engine box, you can go to every other search engine, because we think that it might be interesting to search somewhere else besides on DuckDuckGo. Um, yeah, um, if you see the web page, if every one of you ever goes to it, uh, you see that we also are very classic, like we have a very simple and very, very plain design. So, and this will stay, this will definitely stay. We will never go the direction of Google like, oh yeah, advertisement everywhere and everything like that. This will never happen. <coughs> and what is a very important point is we, spilt our fam uh, we, sp uh, we filter spam sites very intense. So that means when uh, you report a site and say, hey, this site is just a copy of that site, then we remove it from our, from, from our list and you will never see it in the search results again. Um, it's uh, located in Paoli, near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And this is our headquarter. <laughs> very cute, very cute. We are really like five guys uh, full time and like 10 contractors, helpers, and everything like that. Um, we sponsored the CNA, we sponsored the Quality Assurance Hackathon. We have made our own Quack and Hack event uh, in America where we have like one day talks, one day uh, hacking, uh, even though independent of Dr. Go, so you can also work on other CPAN modules. We don't force people there. And hopefully, January, February, Quack and Hack Europe. Keep it in mind, keep it in mind. <laughs> okay, <coughs> so. And we have, uh, um, the, the point is when you have such a small team, you, you, you can't really do everything. So we uh, decided to make as much as possible open source. We decided to take as much 
use of the community as possible and makes as much of, uh, of the platform community-driven as possible. Um, <coughs> for this, we uh, had to bend the old code very much to be in uh, very impressive ways now. Um, so, uh, <coughs> what is now interesting for you on this part is that um, uh, that uh, when you when you uh, uh, normally you have when you have a, such a product like Google or something like that, you can't really extend it. They have no options for you to make it better. To tell them they, they don't even have a real feedback form for telling, hey, those search results are sucking. Give me better ones. Yeah, and. <coughs> And we are, we are trying to change this. We are trying to, to give the users the option to make it better, even though the search results are a topic which we can't really good change or where the, we can't really good involve the user. But on the so-called zero-click info, which is above the search results on our side, uh, this thing can be very much influenced. Um, I probably should show it, because some of you might not have seen it. Um, Oh, I should have gone to the Wi-Fi <laughs> before. <laughs> no, it's uh, my mobile now. That's pretty really simple. Huh? It is simple. Yeah, yeah, it is not much. And when you go to the search itself, you see it doesn't change much. Huh? Oh, yeah, OK. Thanks. I was already confused. You see, there you see this, this zero-click info box, which is like we try to find out what is really the best search results for this thing, which is also like something that is right now market interesting, because everything after the first search result is anyway like in 80% of the cases not used. So the, 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 the trick to find out what is really the most specific thing the user might want is very uh, uh, delicate and very important topic, especially on the mobile sector and everything like that. So now you saw this. Okay, and now to the real topic. <laughs> so, um, yes, we, uh, our open source stuff is on GitHub, and we have our own CPAN clone concept, DuckPan called. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we have in the system to generate the zero click info. We have right now four stages which are relevant. When, when a search query comes in, we at first take it and uh, compare it uh, uh, and check against the so-called FATA database, which you can call like our own index, where we have uh, like for, for many, many, many terms as special results. So when you search for a specific term, you get the specific result from, from this FATA, which is like only a huge database. So when the query fits directly, then you get this. Like you saw when I gave Gabriel Weinberg without the R, he still doesn't understand that because it was not that way in the database. <coughs> a goodie is on the other side, it's really Perl code, um, which, which does stuff. For example, when, when you do, for example, 4 plus 4, yeah, I said UMCS, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then you get the 8, which is actually like Perl code, which runs on the side. Yeah, so our, 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 our system. Uh, sees, okay, he wants to make a calculation, and, and codes runs, and this is making this. We have like very simple goodies. When I, for example, do reverse duck, duck, go, then you get the <laughs> you get Yeah, yeah, you get voodoo, yeah. Okay, so you see that we have also simple things. This is reverse plugin is really like really totally stupid. Yeah, no one, no one ever needs this for the world. But it is a very good, nice example of, of how simple can things be. Um, okay. You have code? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the goodies are real code. We have, we have goodies like, for example, if you give on public DNS, you get a list of the public DNS, which is also a text file, which is stored somewhere and, and fetched by the goodie. So they can be really simple. The complex one is the spice, uh, um, which is like um, JavaScript, which is loaded. When you, when you, for example, when we, for example, check for, uh, for movie informations, then we go to Rotten, dot, to Rotten Tomatoes and get the, the feedback from the users there. Um, 
and this uh, is over Ajax. So the, the remote RP is called and get the information. And for our privacy, we wrap the call to the remote RP through our systems. So still the other side doesn't get your IP. <coughs> okay, when all those stages, Fat Hat, Goody and Spice are all not triggering and no one of those gives a result, then in the loaded page, there is again a, a small hook which fetches another database, which is like the same like the Fat Hat, just in the end of the system. So when there's nothing else matching, the long tail could match. A good example of what is in long tail is Lyrix, which is like when nothing else fits, there might be probably a Lyric which is searched for. <coughs> so, um, yeah, directly to the, next, to the, to the first stage, Fat Hat. Um, the Fat Hat uh, uh, concept is very, very simple. I mean, it's really like, we just need this term has this output. So it's, it's really easy to generate. We need some meta description text file, which includes like the name of the plugin, uh, the name of the, of the Fat Hat uh, system. Uh, it contains the icon, where, which we took, uh, take from. We have some type definitions, which, where we know how we handle this, and keywords, which helps to find the stuff later on our web page to see our, all the features. So this meta, if you have like a, a data, uh, some, some, some data, amount you want to bring to the fat hat, you need this meta.txt file, and then you need for every entry a line in the so-called output txt. So we have like, an, uh, we, we split them with tabulator <coughs> and escape the tabulator with slash slash. Um, and uh, you have like the page, uh, the JavaScript namespace, which all is the data coming from description and description and synopsis is the real text, details and actual information which are hidden for first, uh, the type and the language. So <coughs> those information are then used to show you the fat hat. And, and, and you can really make it with everything. We, we, don't, we don't care how you do it. You can, you can uh, ah, yeah, here, let's, let's see this example here, for example. If, you must imagine this now all in one line <laughs> with tabulata split it. So we have like hello world Perl, we have the all where it's coming from, we have the description and we have the, the, the real data set. So when you have like this in the output txt, this is the output that comes out when someone searches for hello world Perl. <coughs> so it's so easy, a caveman can do it. Uh, and yes, uh, we don't care which language you do it, because the fat hat is like executed uh, 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 from time to time. We, 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 the fat that is generating the data, scraping the data, and then putting it into the database. So we don't care which, which language you are using. We just need to make it happen that it can run on our systems. That's why we should limit it a bit. But definitely, whatever language you want to use, if it's productive, then we can use it. Beside PHP, no. No, I don't want PHP on our systems. So, huh? Yeah, it's, like, it's definitely too buggy and too bullshit, and this is not worth it. Um, what you can do if you say like, oh yeah, I like DuckDuckGo and I want really that my stuff is in the fat or something. But on the other side, I don't want that DuckDuckGo has some special code which accesses my data or something like that. Then you can just go and say, okay, we provide those files directly and we just fetch them via HTTP so that you have the option to directly inject the stuff from your site and you just generate it on your site whenever you need it. <coughs> so, let's take a real-world example. Um, this is uh, the Goody anagram, which is like just shuffling the letters. It's even more pointless than reverse. <laughs> um, but as I said, a good, simple example. Um, we have made a, a meta class, DuckDuckGo Goody, which when you load it, imports all the stuff and all the crap you need to work with it. Um, and then we have the keyword triggers. With the keyword triggers, you can define how the plugin gets involved into the system. In this case, is if the query starts with anagram. Yeah, even though it's, the case is not relevant, uh, if there's a dash in between, as someone would write Anna dash gram, it would also hit. <coughs> so the system is a bit, a bit intelligent there. Yeah? And when it gets hit, you get, uh, you can install a so-called, you install a so-called handler, yeah, with a handle function. In this case, we want the reminder, that means the rest of the query. So when we have the query anagram blah, then the reminder is blah. So we get in the standard variable, 
uh, the content of the rest of the query so that we can easily work with it. So in this case, we just split it up in the chars, we shuffle the charge, the chars, we join them again and give them return because the system itself knows, ah, okay, I just have some text back, so I display it as goodie. <coughs> and here in this case, you can say this is not cached because randomness shouldn't be cached. <laughs> uh, as example, on the other side, you, instead of going with, with word-based queries, uh, you can also say, hey, my thing is a bit more complex. I want to do it with uh, rec apps, which is like not liked by us because uh, you can see it like you can check against 10,000 different words or 100,000 different words in one microsecond, which, which one hash compare. You, you make the keys of a hash, and when you, when you have a word and you want to see if this key exists in the hash, it's like microsecond done. But when you have like 100 or 200 rec apps, which are all checked against, this takes some time. Eh? Rec apps is, is fast, but if, you, if you're counting the microseconds and you see that rec apps in the masters are also not very productive. <coughs> but as I said, you can do it if you need it. In this case, this, this example is cached. We have a specific uh, definition of the name, and here, the handler doesn't need anything because it's just giving out a specific text file which is prepared. <coughs> which is also showing here, um, when you give the return value for the system, uh, the first element is taken as the text implementation. And if you say, hey, I have a specific HTML implementation, you can just give as a, a second parameter HTML and a third parameter the HTML content of what you want to give back. So, this is actually what you need to do to do it, because <laughs> um, we have uh, an app on CPAN, app DuckPAN, which is our development tool, which does everything. So you can go to, uh, you can download your, with your famous CPAN client, <laughs> uh, app DuckPAN. You can then clone the zero-click info goodies repository to your system. You go in there, you install the requirements. DuckPAN supplies the command install depths which is just nothing more than installing the author depths of this scylla and installing uh, the requirements of the, of the thing. And then you can fire up DuckPan query. And DuckPan query is like a, a, a command line version which allows you to test a query. So, you, so when you have like the goodies in there, um, you, you start this, this query program, you get a small prompt, here's your query, and then you can give the query and you see if your goodie is hitting and what your goodie is giving back. <coughs> um, yeah, the DuckPan itself is also, can also upgrade itself. So DuckPan upgrade, upgrade itself. And DuckPan is also, at the same time, the CPAN client for accessing our CPAN or DuckPan. So when you, for example, want to install the translations of DuckDuckGo, you can go DuckDuckGo C, it's a community platform, local DuckDuckGo, DuckDuckGo, which installs this, this package. Even though you don't need it, I just wanted to say that this is all in the same thing. If you have no idea of what you are doing, if you are new to Perl, then I really suggest writing down this command now. <coughs> this thing is actually installing you local lib if you don't already have it. Uh, if you have Perl brew, it detects that you have Perl brew and doesn't install local lib. And then it starts installing cpanm, duckpan, all the requirements and everything for you. Uh, <coughs> so it's very, very handy for the people. We try to catch also very much uh, the errors in it. So when there's an error with the CPAN modules and everything like that, we try to detect what is it and tell the user what he has to do now, which is like a common problem on Perl that, okay, there's an error, and now the people don't know this. So we try to make it very, very, very easy for the people. So if anyone has ever problem with this thing, please come to me and tell me. <coughs> okay. So when you start this, this, this is how it looks like. You see, he's loading all the goodies which he's found in the, in the lib directory. He's checking when you, when you started in the zero click info goodies uh, repository, what you checked out. Then he uses the, um, the modules which you find in the lib directory to start it up. <laughs> and then you see what, what uh, is he using, and then you can give queries and test it. Uh, oh, yeah. OK. <laughs> Now comes the evil part, <laughs> Spice. Um, as said, Spice is uh, JavaScript, which is extra added. For, so when the query is coming in, we at first check, uh, like before with the goodies, 
what is now the trigger. For example, XKCD, uh, uh, we have in, so when the query starts or ends with XKCD, I should use another example for this, <laughs> um, you get the same with the handling. Um, but in this case, the handler is not giving back the result, it's just giving back a call. So, for example, in this case, if you don't give anything, we don't add anything to the call, even though we must return an empty string. Um, if you have like, XK, if you give an XKCD1, then in this case, uh, we would have here the one, here of, out of this, we have this here, uh, 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 then the one in, in it, and this is combined with this one <laughs> there. So <coughs> what happens is that the string that is given back here is attached to the endpoint we at DuckDuckGo generates, which access this remote RP endpoint with the parameters given to this endpoint. So sounds a bit complex, but if you have one standard, it, 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 it's, it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. So, <coughs> so when the uh, when this then is included and, and, and triggered and everything, it uh, <coughs> it also includes a, a JS file, which is then when 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 this call is done, the result which is giving back is given to your specific spice function, which is then looking like, for example, this. This is like the XKCD. Spice, which is just taking the result from the call to XKCD, fetching out data of it, and preparing this block, which is like generating a zero click info. You can see then. <coughs> Sadly, no jQuery. So, to, to pack it all together, the Spice gets triggered, it calls the remote RP, and the result goes to the Spice JS. As said, if you don't get it directly, sometimes it needs a bit more to get, but once in it, then it's so easy. <coughs> okay, long tail. I sadly have no example for the long tail, because um, we are right now not having it refactored, and even the unrefactored version is horrible. So um, right now can't tell much about long tail and how you add to it. But when you have something which is like bring, being in the area of lyrics or something that is a huge amount of data, but still not relevant data, then a long tail fits to there. But if you want to do something in that direction, or, or normally we tell you anyway in which direction it goes. So uh, don't need to care about that for now, sorry. <coughs> so what we uh, have is a very, very nice trick. In DuckDuckGo, we have When you do this here, I hope that the example works. Um, when you have, for example, this here, and you search for Black Lab Bistro. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Then you see that our zero click info is giving you directly the result to Yelp and the picture of Yelp and everything like that, which is like a bit of black magic. At first, I was thinking, hey, Gabriel, how 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 you do this? How how you know that Black Lab Bistro is a fucking location? How do you know that you need to access Yelp? And then it actually is very easy because in the search results there is Yelp here, the third one. Yeah. <laughs> so what we actually do is we go through the search results and see ah there is a Yelp result, and so we trigger the Yelp spice. This is this is what we so called uh, this is what we so called uh, deep spice. This is like the, the spice is uh, oh sorry to know deep is for us the search results. Everything that is in the search results is deep, and so we call it a deep spice, which fits then that we have like <coughs> spice that gets triggered by deep, which we want to achieve with uh, in the in the normalization, which I want to do now is that you have all attributes. So you have specific old uh, sites which define specific attributes and you can then in your spice check against those attributes and say, hey, is this search term a localization or is the search term triggering Yelp or something like that to achieve what you want to do? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, when you now, uh, um, what I showed you before with the zero click info goodies and stuff, 
is uh, uh, actually you give us pull requests to our Goody or Spice re repository. If you now say, hey, I'm an own author, author. I, I want to have it on my repository, I want to have it on my GitHub, or we have a, a company or own open source announcement, you can also make your own packages and upload them to CPAN. We have a package for the Zilla, upload to DuckPan. If you then have a Duck on our community platform and account, you can upload to our DuckPan server. <coughs> Which was for me a very important thing that uh, we allow the people to release themselves. Because I think it's a very important process to, to release, because else you, you wait and then, uh, I want this thing out, <laughs> and then wait for the pull request. So <coughs> when you then have this, you can, as I said, make your own repository, which you then uh, manage on your own. As you see, it's zero-click info goody QR code. This is, uh, we have made an own repository for the QR code because it uses a special library. If you don't have this library, it doesn't work. So we split it up so that it makes it easier. <coughs> so um, as I said, it's all over the community platform at duck.com. You can check it out. It's also completely open source, the community platform. So you can patch it to hell. It's Catalyst, plug, classic. Uh, so just to uh, bring on, I don't know the order is a bit bad, but okay. Um, <coughs> many people are always asking me, hey, such a cool company, do you hire? <laughs> uh, yeah, we hire all the time. The, the problem is we don't hire by, you know, this is, the, the, this is the job and we need someone to do it. We only hire by motivation. That means everyone who's working at DuckDuckGo ripped off his ass before as part of the community to make DuckDuckGo better because they believed in the system, in the, in, in, in the dream of DuckDuckGo, of a privacy-aware search engine which is wor really worth it to use it. <coughs> and so we, we tried. We we we, uh, we try to only hire motivation and people. So people who are. Well, that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm so motivated to present this stuff to you. Uh, and it's and it's really a good concept because you have no 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 real problems inside the company. No one is avoiding work. We're actually trying to gather the work. <laughs> and and so uh, I can really say that if you are wanting to work for DuckDuckGo, try to do something for us. Try to find points which which are helping us. And and if you. If your work for DuckDuckGo is so intense, then at some point, it's a point where you get hired. So this is actually very easy. And it's all very fair, because we don't want to rip off anyone. So uh, yeah, let others tell you if you want to hear about this. <coughs> of course, we only don't need developers, yeah? I mean, DuckDuckGo is a search engine which main mission is to get more users. So if you, if, if, if you see what is my job, my job is always to get more users. Um, we also need design layout, HTML, CSS. We have lots of support to do, very much support to do. Um, community management. We have a community manager now, which is really good, Zach Pappas, who is a really cool, cool guy. And we have other services, like we have our own XMPP server. We make browser plugins. There is Marek, who is our expert about browser plugins. <coughs> and, of course, we have business development and marketing, like any other company, too. Um, which is actually a bit funny because we have an Indian for our business development. Normally, you import the coder from India, we import the business developer from India. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's definitely better. <laughs> so, and this is an impressive list of the modules which are directly or indirectly made for DuckDuckGo. So all those modules you see here, including import into from MST, are modules which were based on the fact that we at DuckDuckGo had a problem. Import Impo is a good example that we wanted to use strict and warnings inside of uh, DuckDuckGo Goody. If you make a goodie that you have strict and warnings on, <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is not so easy if you ever try to get into this topic. Read the Import Into page, it's very interesting. Um, yeah, auto module shared years for generating shared years for modules if you have something like that. CPAN repository is for uh, a reflection for the file system of a CPAN repository. It's a, a, a subset of, of, of a dark pun implementation. Uh, this data is giving you uh, this uh, information about a distribution. It's more like a combining of several uh, dist modules. Local simple is our translation system, which is a wrapper around get text, where I made it possible that you have one API for Perl and JavaScript. 
is exactly the same RP on both languages, which make it very, very easy for people to handle. Uh, module data is giving you data about a module, like you can, without loading the module, see which version it has and so on. <coughs> Pass -scan is, uh, Pass -scan Inc. is searching for modules in, in Scan Inc. And we are very massively using the MUIX uh, space. We have made MUIX command, we have made MUIX SNF, and we have made the MUIX module, which makes it easier to combine several MUIX modules. Uh, hey. Fertig. And this even 10 minutes before, which is no problem, because I would like to answer questions. So uh, very important, very, very important, very, very important. Please come to our ISC channel. Yeah, there's where we hang out all the time. Um, if you don't ever use IRC, you can use this short URL to get to a web chat version of it. Um, if you have any questions about the open source stuff, only asking to open at DuckDuckGo.com. We will definitely care about this. If you use the feedback form, you get also a reply. I mean, we have a, such a small company, we communicate with each other. And if you have like, ah, okay, this is nice that you can do this, but I don't want to code something now, then you can put your ID for something that we should add to ids at uh, to ids .com, which is a, some user voice, something where you can add this stuff. You can also go other around if you say like, hey, I want to code, but I have no idea what I should code. Go there and find something out and say you code this. Uh, yeah. Any questions? January, yeah. Uh, Paris. It will be again at the uh, exactly this thing <laughs> where this guy will help me. <laughs> yeah, so it's all in the process. It's like I have since yesterday the first information. Okay, I'll ask the Ellison the question. Huh? What's your revenue stream? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's always interesting. This is always the first question. This is always the first question. I like it. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the, most, the, most, the most easy point is that um, the most easy point to see is this one is not bringing the input. We have like this one sponsored link, which we have to do because Bing likes to see it. The most revenue we get from Amazon and eBay. Uh, Amazon and eBay. So every time when you see in the search a result of Amazon or eBay, we add our affiliate link to this. And this can make a company, seriously. Seriously, the Amazon affiliate program, I can just suggest that that's the best way to get money. <laughs> I, can't, I can't differently say it. They are really, they are really very generous at this point. And uh, eBay is not so much, but affiliate programs are what we interest most in. But the problem is there are not many more options left because Amazon and, and eBay are making like 80%, 90% of the complete traffic in this area. So. Any other affiliate program is already more or less not so interesting for us because yeah, it is not found in the search results often. Yeah, but we are always working on this. But this is right now making a good point. Um, we are also, just to say, we are funded. We have money from, from, from the same guys who also uh, invest in Foursquare and, and other uh, uh, sites. So we are good backed up. We have no money problem. That's why it's also we are secure and we will not go away. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, I hope this answered your question. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the, inside the plugin, you can also access uh, the other stuff, which is a right, very new uh, feature right now. But you have the variable log for the localization, and you have the variable rec for the request. Where you, where you can get the IP and all other informations, but it's just there in this moment of the request. Uh, normally, we have also geo IP data for this, so you normally just access the geo data and know the position of the user and everything like that. But we have this, what we have this. Uh, it's really like uh, directly using the variables in the stuff. I made a small trick to make this happen, it's very funny, but as I said, it's very new and, and the variables are not filled up there right now mostly but you have access to those variables inside the handler without any stress and any magic. Does Google you guys as a threat? No. <laughs> Google gives a shit. Even though I must say what is very interesting, a small <laughs> story, that 
after DuckDuckGo was registered, I think it was half a year or one year after, uh, Google bought the domain duck.com. Mm -hmm. So if you go to duck.com now, you, go to Google, you come to Google. <laughs> Could be unrelated. <laughs> I don't know. So, but it's really like we, 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 are, we are thinking that really they did it just to annoy us. But besides this, they have no idea of us. I actually had met at the first time a Google employee uh, and yeah, there is not really anything that he cares. <laughs> so the map, are you scraping Google for that or are you using hmm? the map? The map is being, uh, that's this map quest, yeah. which is, which is okay. Bing data set, yeah. Or open street map data set, which is used by Bing and blah, 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 blah. You know, exactly. So, yeah. Huh? Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. 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 This is like this is like what we can't do. We 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 actually thought about doing this, but it's a legal problem. <laughs> there. Yeah. So we could think about wrapping the complete traffic you do on Google through this, so that we can assure this. But it's legal legally on, on very vogue basis so that Google then, then complains. But just to show you, if I have now this black lab bristol thing and I give it to Google, yeah, mobile network in Germany rules. Google's <laughs> 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 huh? Yeah, okay, 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 okay. But well, we're coming from DuckDuck. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I really should have logged into the Wi-Fi before. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. Yeah, this is not like the day to day for this. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, are there any other question while it's loading? <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? Yes. You, you, you ask the question evil. Uh, we have influence of it, of course, because we are taking the results from this other search engines and combining those. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, we, we, we work with the results. Sadly, I can say that making influence on ranking and everything is very hard. Just to explain, every query to those search engine costs money. Yeah, I mean, Bing wants really money. The other ones are just like cost time of the request. Yeah? And this is all like in making influence on this. And for example, we can't go to Bing and request the next 10 pages of the search and then re-rank the sites in there. So we also go page-wise to the other side. So whenever you make a request, you make one request to Bing. If you scroll down, then we reload the next page from Bing and everything like that. So that the we tried our best on this. But this is like the real hard part there. This is like really the primary mission. Hey! <laughs> yeah, see, then? now you're a black lab bristol. Yeah. <laughs> and the map is not loading. <laughs> okay. More questions? Four. Okay. You're breaking the time right now. Now it's perfect. But okay, now we'll say it. Huh? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, at first I want to say, what, uh, first I want to say, everyone, uh, most, many people say to us the name is stupid, but on the other side I can say everyone is remembering that name when people hear it in a list of search engines and someone hears DuckDuckGo, they are laughing because of this name. So our name is remembered after this. The name comes from DuckDuckGoose. It's very easy. The Duck Duck Goose, Goose is, is a child, child song and everything like that. And Gabriel was sitting there. He's not good with names. He's really not good with names. So he said, okay, Duck Duck Goose, Duck Duck Go. Well, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so, you should have demonstrated by bringing people up front. And put that yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then thank you and have fun with the Yapsi.